Hi guys, Dr. Jillard here once again. Let's do a YouTube video on moles. Uh, this is week 10 dermatology. This would be our last lecture for winter 2020 at my school. Sorry I couldn't do this live, but the world is crazy right now with COVID-19 running wild and everybody in my county, Santa Clara County, is shelter in place. So hence online learning. Uh, but nevertheless, here we go. So, moles. What the heck is a mole? What is a mole? That's a mole. Is that the mole we're talking about? No. It's a mole in the ground. How about that? No, that's that's a spy. That's not a mole. Oh, no, that's a terrible... Remember general chemistry, Avogadro's number? That's not a mole. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. There's a mole. Yeah, thank you very much, Windows. This is probably... Uh, keep the color change, uh, but ask me again. Don't don't show me this message again. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's a mole, right there. Oh, let me turn on my little laser pointer here. There we go. Uh, and we sh we could call it more officially a mellow uh, melanocytic nevi is really what a mole is. There's acquired and congenital we'll talk about, but most people call them moles. Okay, some AKAs, nevi, that's plural, nevus is a singular, that was a nevus, there's a bunch of them, those would be nevi, and moles, uh, nevus cell nevi, there's a, some AKAs for those. Uh, these are the most common dermatological problem uh, on the planet, although they're not really a problem, usually, I mean, you've, some of these have been with you since birth and they're really no big deal, but they are considered tumors, they're benign Tumors of the skin, typically, they arise from mutated melanoblasts. Uh, and these melanoblasts are also more commonly known as nevus cells. And you remember from your histology days, what is a melanoblast? Well, blast usually means a precursor cell. And that's what it is. It's a precursor to the melanocytes. And you remember those cute little octopus-like cells, melanocytes? Show you a slide. We'll take a look at them here in a minute. What's the difference between nevus cells, like immature melanoblasts, versus melanocytes? Well, the, they differ from the normal melanocyte uh, by these characteristics. The nevus cells are larger in size. Uh, they don't have octopus arms. They have no dendrites. So therefore, they don't inject neighboring uh, newborn carotenocytes with melanin. So they can give no color to neighbor cells, but they keep the color themselves. They have a lot of cytoplasm. I mean, these are the uh, these are the nevus nevi cells over here. Contain a lot of coarse granules. There's one similarity. <clears throat> oh, and I don't have any water either. My this is my what third video of the day. My voice is starting to go. <clears throat> uh, I'll keep going. Hopefully, it'll hold up. There's one similarity, embryologically speaking. They're both derived from neural crest cells. So neural crest cells give rise to these guys. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm probably going to be coughing a little bit, so I won't have time to edit this out, so sorry about that. Let's do a little review of the epidermis. So it's multi-layered. These are all carotenocytes, right? Carotenocytes. They're born from basal cells, which live in the stratum basale. This is stratum basale down here. These are stem cells. They split by mitosis, uh, and they push up a carotenocyte. And as these go up and up and up and up, they lose cytoplasm. They lose nuclei. They basically die and get rock hard, uh, and they form the different layers of the skin based on their life cycle. So the stratum spinosum is the next layer. Uh, stratum granulosum, uh, and then if you're in glabrous skin, you have a stratum lucidium. If you're in regular hirsute skin, you don't have this layer, remember. And stratum corneum, they're basically dead, super hard keratin filled, keratinized filled with kind of waxy, waterproof borders. That's the so-called barrier uh, that we talk so much about. But down in stratum basale, or here's the dermis, right? Stratum basale has other cells. There's a melanocyte right there. It has these little tentacles, and it injects all these neighboring cells and fills them with melanin. OK, 
Okay, there's a Merkel cell uh, and there's a uh, sensory neuron that connects to it that's for light touch. Anyway, there's a cute little picture. It looks like a little octopus. That's a normal melanocyte. We already said all this stuff. Stratum basale injects melanin. Remember the strange kind of ironic thing about these melanocytes uh, is they inject all these cells with melanin and the melanin ends up forming a nuclear cap over the nucleus of the carotenocytes and that will stay with it until it loses those. Uh, so that's awesome. UV radiation is blocked by this so it can't damage the DNA down here. Uh, and cause mutations to cause skin cancer. What's the irony? Melanocyte, so busy injecting other cells, it forgets to inject itself. So the nucleus of a melanocyte is not shielded, uh, and it can become UV radiation, can damage its nucleus, and damage the chromosomes, and cause uh, them to mutate, grow rapidly, they become immortal, and now you get yourself malignant melanoma. Okay, there's three different presentations uh, that melanocytes can have. Um, and, and these melanoblasts, they tend to not live by themselves. They tend to be in clusters, as happens to. So you have, and these clusters are called nests. So you have nests of these uh, nevi cells. But they go through an evolution. Uh, when they start out, they live uh, at the, in the very bottom layer of the stratum basale, did we go through all those layers? I think we did. Stratum basale is right down here. Uh, so they're right at the right at the very border. Sometimes it's called the dermal epidermal uh, junction is where they, they start to live. Right? And uh, then as time goes by, uh, these nests tend to migrate downward and they go deeper and deeper into the dermis. And as they go deeper, the superficial visible part uh, of their top di tends to differ. It tends to get more warty looking uh, and it grows bigger. They start out as flat as we'll see. And so we have three names. And I should do a disclaimer right here. I would need about three hours to go through this, which I don't have. So I'm just scratching the surface. There's all different kinds of moles. We're just going to hit the very basic one. So it does go a lot deeper than this. Um, but here are the three different looks. So uh, Junctional, complex, dermal. Those are the three different types. Uh, these are very flat looking and we'll go through the characteristics. These are getting more uh, raised up lesion. These are the compound melanocytic nevi, junctional melanocytic nevi, dermal melanocytic nevi. Uh, and sometimes they're called type A nevi cells as they move deeper, type B as they move deeper, type C cells. These are found deeper in the dermis, maybe medium depths of the dermis. And of course, the junctional nevi, uh, they're at the dermal epidermal border. Right, here's a real histological presentation of these nevi cells. And yeah, those are those little black things are the nuclei. And this is a nest of nevi cells. These are immature um, melanocytes, is what these are. And why they don't grow all the way into a Melanocyte is, we don't know. Okay, they, as we said already, they can produce and they do produce melanin, but they don't have any tentacles. So they can't get rid of it. Therefore, they accumulate a, a lot of melanin within themselves and they can look really black and really brown. And that's what gives a lot of our moles that color. They don't all produce melanin. There's some species uh, where some genes are turned off, the melanin genes are turned off in them, and they can produce kind of skin-colored moles. And we've probably everybody's seen those before. Okay. So there's congenital melanocytic nevi and acquired. About 1%, 2% between that number, you're born with these things. You look at some newborn babies. Uh, one of my granddaughters has one right, uh, right on her on her hand, a little one, and that was in, only seen in about one to two percent of people. And if you're born with them, they're considered congenital. So those are considered congenital melanocytic nevi. 
Okay, simple as that. But the lion's share develop after birth, especially when you start reaching uh, adolescence. But they can pop up any time uh, in the you know, after birth, even a couple months after birth. If they're not there when you're born and they pop up, then they're not congenital. Then they're acquired. So we're going to focus. Well, we'll look a little bit at congenital melanocytic nevi, but we'll look at acquired ones uh, mostly. So the congenital, and these are, what, what's an AKA for congenital? I didn't say it yet, but congenital melanocytic nevi. That's a birthmark, right? It's a birthmark. That's what they're commonly called. They can be gigantic. We'll show you some big ones. Uh, the acquired ones tend to be much smaller, under 15 millimeters, or 1.5 centimeters. All right, so here's, a, here's someone with a birthmark. Right? Probably not the greatest place in the world to have one. Uh, but this is congenital melanocytic nevi, and a 19-year-old female who was born with this thing. Uh, so you, they're they don't hurt or anything like that. They're completely asymptomatic. Uh, but aside from psychosocial issues, probably a lot of teasing when she was little, she went through, I bet. And people probably get used to it and don't worry about it. Uh, but you got to watch out for cancer with these things. They do tend to become cancerous. The bigger they are, the more chances uh, there is of developing a melanoma. Okay, we already said their name birthmarks. Uh, they can be tiny, medium size, or huge. They can be anywhere on the body. One differential diagnosis is neuro uh, patients with neurofibromatosis 1. Uh, they have the cafe au lait spots. They're born with them as well. Sometimes cafe au lait can look dark, and they can look similar to a birthmark, and it's not. Of course, neurofibromatosis uh, 1 is problem is not with this. I mean, the skin, cafe au lait spots is not the problem. You have tumors all over the place, on the skin, under the skin, in nerves. Uh, so it can be quite a disabling type disease. Here's a patient with cafe au lait spots, and they look like kind of coffee color. Uh, so someone could be fooled and think those were moles or can their birthmarks, and they're not. Those are cafe au lait spots. Okay, really big ones have a special name, kind of a silly name. I don't know who named it, uh, but I understand why, because they're, they can be giant. And the bigger they are, the more chances they have to becoming very hairy. So they're called giant hairy nevi. And there's several subdivisions. We won't go into all the giant hairy nevi subdivisions. Uh, the most common one of these is called a bathing trunk nevi. And it kind of hangs out at your right at your waistline. Um, so you can just see it kind of creeping out be above your bathing suit. Uh, they can contain hair, hence the word. The bigger they are, the more chances they are of being hairy. It's usually very thick, like not a natural, like the hair on your head. It's like a, almost a horse's hair, super thick. Uh, the hair can be black or it can be brown. Uh, sometimes it can be red or pink. Sometimes the lesions can be red and pink in color, kind of skin color as well. All right. And I can't give you warnings. Uh, with this program, I can't see slides coming up, so I can't warn you of grossness. Uh, but here's a giant hairy nevi that this guy was born with. And you can see he's had a big surgery here because a big chunk of it became cancerous at one point. So the bigger they are, like this one, a super high tendency to become malignant uh, and turn into malignant melanoma. So you have to watch these like a hawk. He's probably every six months to a dermatologist, maybe even every three months. They tend to be... Uh, flat when they first develop. I think I said that already. Remember, or, or just, just like their cousins, the acquired ones, uh, these tend to go through some phases too. So uh, they're flat usually in childhood, but as they get older, just like acquired melanocytic nevi, they tend to be, become raised in more verrucous, ver, like fair, ver, ooh, like you, cus, verrucous. That means warty in appearance. So, uh, and that's the same for the acquired ones. They tend to become more warty looking with the passage of time. So some differential diagnoses, seborrheic keratosis, 
watch it. We're not going to get to this quarter. I think I do have a YouTube video on it. It's a very, the great imitator, the melanoma imitator. Um, but there are, uh, and diagnosis also would have to be uh, malignant melanoma as well, because that can look similar. What about the risk for cancer? Again, the large ones can definitely become cancerous. Uh, they can morph into malignant melanoma with the passage of time. And at the risk of melanoma developing is directly proportional to the size of the lesions. The smaller ones under 15 centimeters, they rarely become cancers. Uh, so you may not even have to remove them. Once they get bigger than 1.5 centimeters, you should have those things removed and biopsy because they just tend to become cancerous. We got a lot of slides to look at today, but a lot of them are pictures like this. So what do you think of this? What do you make of that? Uh, it's 12 millimeters in size, so it's pretty big, bigger than the, he the, the eraser of a pencil. But here's the key in the history. Mom said, oh, that's been present since birth. It's not, not as worrisome if it's been there. If it develops in a 60-year-old man out of the blue, probably cancer. So you got to be careful with those. But if it's been there all the time, it's not as worrisome. Uh, so it's got hair. Look, I see the thick hair coming out of that thing. That's kind of the giveaway there. Um, so this is a classic congenital, considered a small melanocytic nevi. And it's got what's called a verrucous appearance or cobblestone appearance, some call it. Risk, because it's under 15 centimeters, the risk isn't that great. That'll become melanoma. You probably don't have to worry about that unless it starts growing later in life. Differential diagnosis, though. Uh, well, maybe it's a dermal nevus. Maybe it's acquired, but we can erase that. Uh, we can erase compound as well because we know it was there since birth, so it can't be really those. Could be seborrheic keratosis, malignant melanosis, or malignant melanoma. These guys always go together. Make sure you watch that seborrheic keratosis video before boards. Uh, would you refer something like this out if, if they didn't know it was there from birth? Yeah, it breaks the ABC rules. It's bigger than six millimeters, bigger than the eraser tip of a number two pencil. It's got a choppy border, pretty hold to fold it in half. It's variegated, darker brown in the middle, lighter brown around the outside. So yeah. Breaks the ABCs. I think we're going to, we'll actually review those. I have a slide I threw in there in case you don't remember those. A medium size congenital melanocytic nevi, CMN. Uh, the chances for melanoma increase proportionally to the size. So it's got like a medium sized chance of event developing melanoma someday. Uh, you got to monitor these, these closely for change. Some authors are kind of split on this, some authors recommend biopsying it immediately. To see how deep it goes and if they get down in the uh, if they get well certainly if they get down to the subcutaneous tissue it needs to be removed that's cancer at that point how about this one this is lesion was 20 millimeters or two centimeters in size it's been there since birth well for your purposes chiropractors and physical therapists acupuncturists you primary health care providers uh, you need all you need to do. You have to worry about anything more than referring them out. So you remember the ABCs. It's got a regular border. If it's got different colors in it, that breaks the ABC rule. If it's over six millimeters, this one's way over six millimeters. Uh, and if the patient maybe it's on his back, he's never seen it before. Got to go to the dermatologist. If it's been sitting on his arm, family doctors looked at it for years and hasn't changed it. Not that concerning. That was a congenital melanocytic nevi and just had to be monitored. How about this one? 32-year-old man, 18-centimeter lesion. It's been there since birth. Think of that. Well, it's been about the same since birth, but that's much bigger. It's probably a medium size, a congenital melanocytic nevi, and you just got to gotta watch the thing so it doesn't become cancerous. Now, large ones, uh, so once it gets more than 5% of the body's surface, they're considered large congenital melanocytic nevi. These guys, you got to be careful with them. Uh, they do like to, t to become uh, malignant. 
Um, the lifetime incidence uh, is probably around 4 or 5 percent uh, become malignant. So it's not all of them. Uh, but the first five years of life is kind of dangerous. 50% of melanoma transfers by age five. Uh, so if it's going to become malignant melanoma, it's going to be within those first five years of life. So uh, that should be the part that becomes malignant obviously needs to be removed as soon as possible. These guys could be very hairy as well. Sorry, can't give you, you sensitive people. Can't give you warning because I can't see the slides coming. So, yeah, that's a really hairy one, right? Uh, congenital melanocytic nevi. So we're out of that rabbit hole. Back to acquired melanocytic nevi we're talking about. Remember, they these show up in early childhood. Uh, they, they can keep popping up until about the third decade of life, which is in the 20s. Uh, puberty, when the, the hormones start raging, that's when they tend to pop up. After the third decade, they start disappearing. Uh, they don't pop up anymore. They don't. They could actually disappear from your skin, but they may hang out and stay with you for the rest of their life. But the point of that is that they don't. They don't show up de novo, right? Typically, do not appear de novo, especially after the age of fifty. Very suspicious for melanoma if it shows up after the age of fifty. Caucasians are more susceptible simply because they've had more UV exposure uh, with the passage of time. Some old wives' tales about these things, you may have heard, never pluck a hair from a mole. Ridiculous. That's not true. Remember my mom telling me stuff like that. Don't have a little mole. Don't touch it. Don't, you know, don't rip it. It'll cause cancer. Don't pluck it. Don't do anything. That's that's not true. It's old wives' tales. Uh, if you rip it or it gets removed, that's no, you know, you're not going to get cancer from that. Melanocytic nevi, uh, the risk of them becoming cancerous is typically quite low. It's directly proportional to the number of melanocytic nevi present within the nest. They can biopsy it and get an idea of how packed that nest is with nevi cells. If it's really packed, you got to be careful of it. If it's not that packed, you can kind of just let it stay. Uh, typically uniform in color and shape, so... Uh, you can fold them in half. They might be variegated a little bit, but it's usually a very faint variegation uh, as opposed to a really black color in the middle and a super light color, uh, so kind of lightly variegated. Uh, but if any mole changes shape or really or color really rapidly, uh, it's a sign of cancerous development. You need to get referred to a dermatologist. What do you make of this one? So that's eight millimeters. It's a little bit over the pencil tip. Well, for your purposes, you primary health care providers, it breaks the rule, the ABC rule. It's variegated. The C, the color change, or color change, but variegation. Uh, so you got dark spots in it and light spots in it. Uh, the border is kind of choppy, pretty hard to fold it in half, breaks the ABC. Turns out to be an acquired melanocytic nevus, though. Uh, but it looks like a lot like seborrheic keratosis as well. Could even look like malignant melanoma a bit. So those three are often very hard to tell apart. Uh, so I already said this, it may be variegated. Uh, it presents with various shades of black and brown. If it's variegated, the colors are typically distributed in a uniform pattern, and it's lightly variegated. Shouldn't be extreme dark black and then super light brown. Uh, but that said the early melanoma formation can look exactly like that look exactly like that so you just kind of got to keep an eye that's why it's best if you break that for that the abc rule send it to the dermatologist let them worry about it don't risk your expensive license on something like that okay uh adolescent growth spurt we said that's when they tend to pop up the most that's the second decade of life uh, they can scare patients and teenagers when they pop up because uh, that, I mean, it, it doesn't look like basal cell carcinoma, um, but I mean, it, it could look, basal cell could kind of look like that. I'm not sure if we even got, did we get the basal cell? Or, or I'm sorry, uh, mal malignant melanoma. I'm not even sure if we got that far, uh, but I do have a video on that. So before boards, uh, you know, this dermatology kind of 
digressing, but this dermatology class should be way bigger than this. I'm actually going to put a proposal in next quarter and see if I can't uh, get this to its own class and make it a two-hour class. I keep hearing so much that it's on the board's dermatology, and yet I have 45 minutes, kind of a class within a class. So we'll see what the powers above say about that. Um, okay. And as we know, we said already, acquired melanocytic nevi. Uh, as they grow, they grow downward normally. So they start out when they're brand new and kids, they're usual junctional nevi. Uh, and then they become compound nevi, a little more warty, look, warty looking or raised looking, not so much warty. And dermal nevi, that's the older ones. Uh, they, they often look quite warty. I already covered that. So let's talk about the three stages. Here's junctional nevi. They're the very first ones that pop up. They're called junctional because the nest cells develop right at the dermal epidermal border, right at and a little bit into the dermis, a little bit in, the, in stratum basale still. Uh, they're usually flat. They're medium to dark brown. Uh, they might be raised a hair, but they're uh, not like a hair, but they may be raised a tiny bit. Uh, they're typically less than six millimeters. How big is that? That's the number two pencil eraser. Uh, the circumference of that is six millimeters. Uh, if it is variegated, it's going to be very lightly variegated. Uh, and they're definitely not uh, verrucous. They're not warty looking in appearance. Here's a nice, perfect junctional nevi. You can see the pores of the skin. This is a really small, a couple millimeters, three millimeters it was. It is variegated, so it does technically break the ABCs, but it's small. Uh, it's a little darker in the center, uh, but the variegation is very, uh, very symmetrical. It's kind of painted light brown on the outside and darker brown. Um, that's a classic junctional nevus. Uh, again, they're typically hairless at this point. Very rare for them to progress into melanoma. Uh, they could with the passage of time, not always, may stay like that for the rest of your life. Uh, but as you get in your 30s and 40s, they might go to the next stage and start raising up a little bit. And at that point, they're called a compound nevi as they get into the, uh, as they get deeper into the dermis. How about this one? That was four centimeters. Uh, it is slightly variegated. It's a little darker. It looks a little like basal cell carcinoma, kind of can start to look like that a bit. Uh, but that that doesn't really look. Melanoma can look more like that. Uh, but it's it's very evenly variegated. It's got light brown around the outside, dark brown in the middle. We could fold that one in half. It doesn't really have jagged borders. Uh, so that one turned out to be a junctional nevus. Not too worried about that. If I saw. This one, I don't like the looks of this one. This looks exactly like malignant melanoma. Exactly. You can't this even a dermatologist would have to biopsy this. You can't tell. It's it's you couldn't fold it in half very good. It's got really jagged borders. It's over six millimeters, so it's too big. So there's another ABC rule. But look at the variegation. It's really black and dark here, and then it's super light out here. Uh, so that's extreme variegation, uh, and it, the variegation is not symmetrical. So those are kind of crazy growing cells out of control. That uh, that sure looks like a, a cancer. But it actually turned out to be the great melanoma imitator, seborrheic keratosis. Uh, so that's why, I mean, follow your ABCs. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, but you should have, you, you got to send these out because that could have just as easily been malignant melanoma. Uh, and what are the ABC, DE rule, in case, I, th I know you've had this probably a couple times, but uh, there should be a star on this, obviously. I don't know if I do a question on it, but. Uh, so A is for asymmetric. If it's asymmetrical, you can't fold it in half. A B, if the borders are, that should be irregular. If the borders are irregular. Uh, if the color is variegated or multicolored, refer it out. If the diameter is greater than a number two pencil eraser, six millimeters, refer it out. If the thing is changing, I mean, if you're if you're going to let one slide, make sure you measure it and put that in your soap notes when you reevaluate Mrs. Smith 
uh, if it's grown, they need you need to send that thing out. All right, so with the passage of time, they may grow deeper into the dermis, and they may change. The shape of it may change in the skin. And this is called a compound nevi now. And that means that the nest of nevi cells has, has expanded, and they, it expands downward deeper into the dermis. So you could get a biopsy, and you could, you could identify it by how deep it was into the dermis. Uh, these are more elevated than junctional nevi, still tend to be light brown and uh, maybe not uh, typically not as dark as a junctional nevi but you can't go by that i mean they could look any color this is where you might see some hair starting to grow out of them though and that's kind of one of the telltale signs this, sorry this isn't the greatest picture but it's a raised lesion it's four millimeters uh, that's too raised to be uh, a junctional nevi um, so this actually is a compound nevi, right? So it looks like a classic, just run of the mill, similar to a junction, except it's more raised. This one didn't have any hair coming out of it. Got to find a better picture. Oh, it's actually kind of was kind of hard looking for pictures uh, of these kinds. Now here's another one raised five millimeters. It's not really variegated that much. It's round. You could fold that in half. That's a mole. Uh, specifically, it's a compound nevus. How about this guy? This one's a tiny bit. It's still small, though. That's why these ones aren't coming out that good. They're so uh, small. So it's raised here. It is variegated, but it's it's not coarsely and irregularly variegated that much. You could probably fold that in half. So that probably says it's a mole or seborrheic keratosis, uh, maybe. But because it's raised like that, it's more more uh, mole-like or nevus-like. So that turned out to be a compound nevus. Boy, put this one in your brains. This is just, this is melanoma city right here. It could be seborrheic keratosis again, but a mole will never look like this. It's flat. It's a little, little bit warty or cobblestone. But look at all the different colors. It's bl almost black here, super light here, brown here can't fold it in half this one is definitely trouble there's no way that's uh um, that is that needs to be referred out uh, this one was referred out and that's classic malignant melanoma okay so get that one in your brains you refer those things out right away okay now the last phase the mole may change once again as you get into your 50s or 60s uh, and the last phase are dermal nevi. Uh, these are much deeper. The nevis, the nest of nevi cells have grown further down. Uh, and these ones really look verrucous. They're quite warty. Another name for verrucous is papillomatous. Papillomatous. Uh, I like verrucous better. Uh, but they're the same. And they're more dome-shaped, but they're really kind of gross-looking. They're quite warty. Uh, you can see them on the face and in ears and things like that. Let's take a look. A little looks like a little brain there. Uh, that's a classic dermal nevi right there. It's probably about six millimeters or so. Very warty looking, right? Cobblestone looking. Not really that variegated. Uh, they tend to be lighter, even lighter shades of brown. The darker ones tend to be those very first generation of them. Junctional nevi tend to be darker. Then they get a little bit lighter, uh, compound nevi. And dermal nevi are the, probably the lightest of them, even fleshy in color. Uh, they can also have hairs growing out of them. Uh, they can get pretty big, uh, and they tend to be warty looking. This one's 7 millimeters. Skin color, I mean, classic dermal nevi there. Dermal nevus. How about this one? This one's a little more funky looking, right? Uh, so this one's got like a waxy appearance and it's got this kind of bloody look to it. That's classic basal cell carcinoma. Um, that's not a mole. You'll see the difference between that, how it's smooth. It may have a little tiny specks there, but it just looks like part of your skin. That thing's got some crazy growth. It's got some telangiectasia, got that waxy look to it. That's classic basal cell carcinoma. Anytime you see telangiectasia, got to refer it out. That means the tissue is growing really fast. 
there's in the scalp of somebody skin colored it's lost all its pigmentation kind of warty looking uh, that's a classic uh, dermal nevus run-of-the-mill dermal nevus everything we said how about this one well, it's definitely not skin color it's got it's pigmented with stuff uh, but yep yeah, it's just another one run-of-the-mill I uh, they wouldn't say run-of-the-mill that's a little odd looking uh, but it is skin color it might be strangulated a little bit sometimes the blood supply can get cut and they start getting a little bit of a tissue a schema is going on it's probably what's going on there how about this one probably about a racer size maybe a little under a racer size but see the telangiectasia in it it looks like a run-of-the-mill mole it's skin color looks like a derm a derm or a um, dermal junction or a uh, oh geez it looks like a run-of-the-mill mole but it's telangiectasia you got to refer it out because it could be fast growing but it came out to be just the dermal nevus okay How about this one? Oh, immediately send it out. Look at the telangiectasia growing there. I mean, it makes you think of basal cell carcinoma uh, when it looks like this. Turned out to be a dermal nevus, uh, but that could, that looks exactly like basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma, sometimes it, oh, you can see open lesions in it and a little bleeding and things like that. Right, there's kind of a view of where we've been. So there's the stages of a run-of-the-mill uh, mole or nevus. These are acquired nevi, and we have a junctional compound and dermal. And junctional are flat, darker looking. Then they become slightly elevated. They, these shouldn't be so dark here. The author didn't do a great job. They tend to be lighter in skin color, but they're definitely bigger and more warty uh, looking. How about this one? Do another one. Four millimeters, slightly raised. Well, it's pretty dark, so I don't, I don't think it's a dermal. Uh, so, pretty flat. Uh, it's a little bit variegated, but yeah, I would probably say that is because it's so dark in color. Uh, it's probably a junctional nevi, and it is a junctional nevi. How about this one? I'm almost done here. Yeah, you can get them right there. Your eyelid as well. Well, it's pretty dark in color. It's pretty raised, though. It's got hair coming out of it. Uh, so that turned out to be a compound nevus. How do they know? They have to take a little biopsy of it and see how far the uh, the nest goes down to the dermis, and then they can and then they can categorize it. What about the management? Again, if you break the ABCs got to refer out to a dermatologist. Dermatologist would do a biopsy uh, and that will tell the story. Um, sus again, suspicious lesions always should be biopsied, uh, including subcutaneous tissue. Uh, so that, they don't like to buy it's They can do a needle biopsy where they don't take it out, but to cut the thing out, if it is cancer, so or highly high chance of it becoming cancerous, I mean, it lives leaves a pretty big divot in the skin they have to uh, almost the doc's got to be a good plastic surgeon to sew it back together because they have to take subcutaneous tissue wide margins is the bud buzzword when you suspect skin cancer because you don't want to leave any cells behind they could get into the lymph system uh, and go after a biopsy is done uh, sometimes people freak out because black spots will appear in the scar tissue of the legion uh, those usually are almost nevus cells that come back, um, but people think it looks like melanoma. Uh, like here's a scar. Somebody ripped, they didn't do a very good job of either sewing it back together or they ripped the stitches open, filled them with scar, but then it got this nasty black tissue. And if you didn't know there's a scar there, that looks like melanoma, but it's not. Uh, those are just nevi cells. Uh, it's called a pseudomelanoma when it comes back uh, in a place where you've previously biopsied. It scares everybody to death, but it's usually just nevi, nests of nevi cells in there. Okay, we made it through. Thanks for watching. Again, sorry I couldn't present this to you in person. Uh, I, I have a feeling next quarter 
which is in a couple of weeks, we'll probably be doing the same type of, of scenario, this, this class, this online lectures. Uh, but once the dust settles from this virus, uh, we'll be back to normal. And so look forward to seeing you guys running around school. See you later.